to them. Are you able to follow these two good? Uh, <laughs> it won't be out of the ordinary anyway. You won't be out of the ordinary. <laughs> You'll do fine. You were my student teacher, weren't you? Yes, I was. <laughs> And I, and I taught one year and I felt sorry for the kids because I don't think I was a very good teacher. <laughs> Isn't that the way? That's not the way to talk, is it? There you go. You're over quite close to your mouth. Like so? Like so. Thank you. Well, first of all, I have most of my contracts that I ever signed. And at the time that I was going to start teaching at uh, Golden Polk County Normal. I, first time, I hadn't, hadn't decided for sure that I was going to go, but the principal came out from Polk County Normal and talked me into it. Anyway, he's, he said he thought maybe we'd be getting $100 a month by the time I, I started. Well, that sounded pretty good, and there was a shortage because uh, it was during the war, and a lot of people had gone to the cities to work. So, um, it was such a shortage of teachers that we only went one year to Polk County Normal and one double summer session to a state college. Then we taught the next year, and then we went double summer session the next summer, and we had our two years in. And when he mentioned the train, I thought that, that was the reason I went to Superior. I could take the train up there, because we didn't have a car. And um, anyway, he said he thought, the, the principal said he thought we might be getting $100 a month by, by fall. Well, it turned out we got 145 And um, and we would have a janitor for three months of the year. Now, janitor only meant starting the fires. And we had an outdoor toilet at um, Laysdale, and it was up to the teacher to sweep it and keep it neat for the kids. And. Uh, My first school was Lainsdale, and all the business was done in the homes. Um, my first contract was stand, uh, signed in the Stanley Larson home. And I was there then for two years. And I had student teachers, and they told me that they thought that they would be getting 180 the second year I was there. They'd be getting 180 the next fall when they went out. So I thought, well, after two years, then I should be able to get 200. Well, when the uh, school board, one of the school board members asked me about coming the next year, I told him how much I thought I wanted. Oh, he said, no teacher will ever be worth that much. <laughs> so <laughs> I wasn't too disturbed. I just thought I wouldn't go. Um, but in a few days, one of the members of the school board up at East Lake Town called me, and I went up there and got 220. <laughs> but and, and our meeting was held in her kitchen. My husband went in the living room and played with her son, <laughs> who they both have passed on since then. And I stayed there then for three years, and then I retired where I thought for good. Um, oh, well, when, when I, uh, see, and then the then I did retire until I subbed up at Orr School, and um, 
when they asked their teacher back for the next year, she said that they were moving to a city. It was Barb Hoffman. And I had supped for her during that winter. So uh, the school board came down to my house and we had a meeting right there and, and uh, I signed for R. Taught there that one year and they had a meeting to integrate. And uh, the day after their meeting, Mr. Sorensen from St. Croix, the supervisor down there, called me and asked if I would care to teach into in the St. Croix system. And that's when I came to Cushing and stayed here for 31 years. Now, when, when I started teaching at Lanesdale, Lanesdale had 15 students. And then when I went up to Lake Town, they had 37 students. So we, we had all sorts of schools, as Doris Jean was mentioning, too. And, um, and you know, in the, in the schools, there were a lot of different kinds of seats. At, at uh, Lanesdale, I know, they were fastened to two boards so that you had to move the whole row at a time. Well, up in East Lake Town, they had individual ones with, with an arm that came out for when they were in class. So then I could arrange it differently. We put their, um, for each class, we put the seats in, in a circle. And um, that way, I went to the different classes, and the kids stayed where they were. But um, we had, you know, two grades pretty much together. The first and second grade had at least appreciation classes together. And uh, third and fourth had their subjects together, so one year they, they'd have um, one course in the next year, they'd have a different one. And the um, same way with science and social studies. Well, sometimes then, if you were the unlucky one to be in third grade, when you, the year you were having some fourth grade work, you had to work extra hard. But that makes me think I'd like to mention uh, how much I think of the teachers that have had occasion to work with at all in the last few years. I've tutored a boy for a little over six years, and I can tell by the remarks that are on his papers that they're truly interested in him and give him a lot of encouragement. One thing that I have here is the old poem book that we used on odd and even years. And uh, when I think of Mary Brenholt, I think of how long those poems had been taught and how long they stayed with them. Because when she used to write with me to a uh, homemakers meeting, she used to recite some of them. Remember, um, some like um, which one was it I was looking at? The the one of the snow had begun in the gloaming and busily all the night you've been seeping fields and highway with islands deep and white. Every pine and fir and hemlock or ermine too dear for an earl, and so on. And it's a father and his little girl together. And uh, as he is thinking about it, it at the end, it said, they say that she couldn't know that his heart was with her sister buried deep beneath the snow. And um, I was reading through some of these poems again. 
and I don't know if they would ever be able to have them in our schools today because there's really a lot of religion that has seeped into them. You know, blessings and so forth. This is the one, by, by the way, that was called by, out by the librarian, so I took it home. <laughs> Thinking of the, of the relationships um, of, the, of the community and the school together, I can remember at, um, especially at Lanesdale and East Lake Town, we had organizations, not, I think we did call it a PTA at um, Lanesdale, but up at Lake Town it was, um, just a, a community club to enjoy because our president was a bachelor, so it wasn't a PTA, and um, an elderly man who had retired um, from farming made the stage for our uh, school, and then they give, oh, we'd have basket socials, we'd have um, mock weddings, and then once a year, there was usually a program downtown in the room above what's Jack's now, and it was to raise money for the polio fight. Remember that was when that was so great. And um, the parents were also interested in the school. They'd come and visit school. I can uh, <coughs> remember when I was up at Lake Town, East Lake Town, they'd, uh, some of the mothers would come, bring the coffee pot and plug it in when they would come. And they came for my birthday and we had coffee after school for my birthday. Up at Orr, I remember some of the mothers came to observe the classes. They'd sit in the classes at the end of the day, and they also had their coffee pot along. So the community really backed the school. And they were willing to help. I can remember at East Lake Town, the first, the first year I taught there, the mothers of the community came to clean the school before school started and they polished or waxed the hard oak floor. And one of, the, one of the mothers had a little baby, and she brought it and put it to, put it to sleep and put it up on a uh, table and continued to, and worked. So they did a lot, a lot to help. Now, um, the, the work at, um, of the teacher at school changed a lot during our career. At, in the beginning, remember, we had these, these carbon papers, we'd have to write it out and then we would put it on and duplicate it on a, the gelatin surf, surface. And, um, we spent a good share of the summer typing, if we had a typewriter, um, to get ready for the next year. But um, 
There are other things that, that make it hard, I'm sure, right now. One thing that I can remember is the, the graduation from the rural school. We would go to some place in the county and take our test. And then we had graduation at the fairgrounds for all the uh, graduates in the county. Some of the children seemed to be very happy, but there were some who um, couldn't help but feel kind of sorry for them. And yet, um, I, re I remember one day, it was we were getting ready for summer vacation, so the kids had, had a little extra time playing outside, and. Uh, when they came back in, there was a little boy and a couple little girls in line because we'd all go out and watch them when they had their had their water, and uh, they wanted to talk to me, and they said they had something for me in their hand, and a rind with rub, and I said, "Is it a bug?" No, they said, "A hug." <laughs> and so we, had, we can remember some, some very good parts like that that aren't really so great. And I think that sometimes the, a teacher really was more than just the center in school. I can remember one mother who wasn't too well dressed, and she had a funeral to go to. So she called me one night and asked if she could borrow a coat for me because she knew I had two, but she needed one to go to the funeral. So you really were more in the community than the, the community depended on you more than they do now sometimes. It's a good thing they don't have to as much now. Um, one, part, one time of the year that was always fun was in, right before vacation when we would clean the, the uh, great schoolyard. And then we'd have a winter roast and, and a ball game before the end of the day. And, um, didn't take a lot of pictures, but we did have one where one year this was my eighth grade class and we went to town and had a graduation picture taken. And I think we'll always remember some of them. And And um, Doris Jean mentioned playing ball and so forth. I can remember we did that. And sometimes, oh, and I saw in one of the pictures of mine, it says kitten ball instead of softball, remember? Um, sometimes the big kids, they would walk to another school and play a game and then come back. And, oh, by the way, I told you how little we've got in the beginning, but by the end, teacher salaries came up and were respectable. And I guess it was all, all worth it. 
I can remember a couple years ago, one of the boys that I had hit in school saw me in the restaurant and came over and gave me a big hug. And they didn't used to do that, you know. But then he, he wound up going to school over to, at a university in Michigan, and his professor was another former student of mine that was teaching at the university. So you get a lot out of teaching besides the money part. And I guess I don't have anything more. No, thank you. When uh, Wolf Creek School closed, then we went to Cushing. And the first year I went to Cushing, I was in seventh grade, and Mrs. Randstrom was my teacher. So we, we learned how us country kids that went to a school with two or three kids learned how to get along in a school with 25 kids and a fence around the playground that we couldn't go out. And, and Mrs. Ransom made it really easy for us to get adjusted because there were a lot of different kids from different schools coming in at the time and we all were kind of a little bit, uh, I guess we'd say rustic maybe. <laughs> and we, we appreciate that. A rustic teacher. <laughs> I want to thank you ladies very much. Is there anybody got any questions for these ladies? Before we do that, how many of you uh, went to a rural school? So most of you. How many of you uh, taught in your career sometime? Quite a few of us. A lot of us didn't stick it out like uh, our three speakers tonight. <laughs> uh, is there, did somebody have a question there? Mary? Um, I didn't get your name for the last speaker. So you were here until Cushing School closed? No, I was here in 88. That was Jeanette Ransom that you're talking about. And when was this building built? 1959. Um, no, I think 56 at least. 56. Yeah. 56. I think 56 sounds better. And then they, they moved in here. In the 56 and 57 school year because my son was in first grade. Mm -hmm. okay. Anybody else any questions? I was going to ask if up in the Arctic Circle if they ever frost ever went out to get a plant of garden or anything in the summer or never got that warm? There was a permafrost up there. There was permafrost in some places just north of there. Because it was 50 and 60 below for. Uh, 50 below for one month at a time, and 60 below for a few months at a time. There's permafrost. Did you plant? Did they plant anything? Uh, yes, because in the summer it gets so warm. Oh, uh -huh. And when it's very cold in the summer, they could, it could even get 90 degrees in the summer. Thank you. Okay. Um, I was just handed this by it's Carolyn Green, isn't it? By Carolyn Wadeen, and she said, you're, you're all invited to a one-room or two-room country school on Thursday, May 27th at 7 o'clock at the Frederick Elementary School on Birch Street. And it's a program by the fourth graders that are putting on by the fourth graders of the Frederick School. If anybody is interested, did you want anything else to say about it? Um, well, yes, I'll say that uh, I, I'm going to be writing a little skit for the fourth graders to be doing. And I would say some of your stories may end up <laughs> in the skit, uh, especially with the teacher's narration. So uh, I also added on here that we'd be very happy if people would bring memorabilia and we'll have display tables out so that there can be a lot of sharing. The fourth graders in Frederick are extremely excited about all of this. They're going to be going to the uh, school, which is the Lansdale School, right at the Bocani Museum? No, that's the, it's the East Farmington one. Oh, it is. Okay. It's the East Farmington Falls Point. Yeah, Lansdale and Lake, right, right, yeah. right. They're going to be going there to reenact a day as a one-room school in May. And then this program will come out of their experience from that. So. We'd be very happy to have you there, and there'll be a good chance for discussion. Thank you, Carolyn. Um, that concludes our program for tonight.
and I hope everybody signs up back there on the end of the table for the door prizes that are there, which will be handed out later. And uh, we'd like to thank our three ladies tonight for very much for putting on their program. Okay, uh, April 27th at the, is it going to be at the Justice Center? At the Justice Center in Balsam Lake, the County Historical Society is putting on an antique road show. Bring your antiques and we'll appraise them. I think. <laughs> <laughs> we need a backup once in a while. And I want to thank you all for coming in. And, and, um, don't forget to enjoy the refreshments we have back there and, in, and visit a while. Thank you all very much.